Hello everyone, welcome to this QHack 2022 video. We hope you enjoyed the event and had a lot of fun. My name is Parham, one of the members of the amazing team behind QHack. And today I'm going to walk you through one of our introductory coding challenges. A little bit of intro about myself. My background is quantum electronics, mostly on the experimental side. And my personal passion is quantum computing education. And that's what I do at Xanadu as a quantum computing education strategist. Fun fact. When in COVID, our nanoelectronics research lab was closed, I found my way to continue working with my new details by collecting and occasionally repairing mechanical watches. Getting back to the coding challenge, today we are going to go through super dense coding. At the beginning, we start with a review of the fundamentals of super dense coding, and then we jump into the code. So before we go to the code, let's review the problem for this challenge, super dense coding. So what is super dense coding and what does it do? Basically, super dense coding allows us to transmit two classical bits using one qubit. So the input is two classical bits and the output after measurement is again two classical bits transmitted using one qubit. To some of you, this might sound familiar because there are some similarities to quantum teleportation. So to clarify, the difference between super dense coding and quantum teleportation is that in teleportation we transmit one qubit using two classical bits but in super dense coding we transmit two classical bits using one qubit now before we write the code it's a good idea to check the circuit of the super dense coding as you can see the whole problem uses two wires so for the code we also will use two wires and it's in, it starts with entangling our qubits using a bell pair, which consists of a Hadamard gate and a CNAT gate for a maximally entangled case. Now in this problem, you will be asked to use a non-maximally entangled uh, case. So instead of the Hadamard gate, we will use the RY gate. Then the sender, which is normally called Alice, have to encode the bits. So for encoding the bits, they have to use a protocol. This information is given to you in the coding challenge statement. So for example, if they want to send 00, zero uh, they can use an identity operator for encoding and so on for other classical bits that they want to send. Then once the information is sent to the receiver or Bob, they need to decode the bits using a CNAT gate and a Hadamard gate. And finally, there is the measurement and the classical bits that you will get as the output. So in this coding challenge, we have to figure out what is the probability of transmitting our bits successfully or what is the probability of getting the right output. So let's go to the code and write the code for this circuit. Now it's time to get to the exciting part, the coding section. So the coding challenge starts with a problem statement, which describes the problem, the super dense coding, using a maximally entangled pair of qubits. Then it explains the encoding protocol that Alice used. This is what we are going to use in the code. And then it describes the form that we could use for a non-maximal entangled state. This is again what we are expected to use in the code. So in this case, there is a chance that our information will not be sent accurately and there will be an error. So the question is asking, what is the probability for Bob to receive the correct information? And that is connected to this alpha values we use for the non-maximal entangled state. So let's get into the problem. And we start first with installing Pendulane. In this tutorial, we are using the version 22. And if you don't have Pendulane installed, you can also check Pendulane.ai website, the installation tab for more information. So then we have to import Pendulane. And from Pendulane, we need to import NumPy. Now, once we have the basics ready, it's time to 
prepare our device we use the QML that device and we use a default qubit there are other types of qubits that we could use but for this problem default qubit is sufficient and we use two wires for the whole problem now it's time to create our circuit we use the QML node which consists of our device and a quantum function in this case our circuit and our circuit is sending the bits as a input and the alpha is related to the non-maximal entangled state so we start a circuit with the ry rotation for the non-maximal entangled state it's a half rotation so we apply two alphas everything is applied to the first wire that's what was asked in the problem statement then we apply a CNOT for the entanglement on both wires now it's time for Alice to encode the information if she wants to send a zero identity operator so we can skip that she wants to send a one uh, you can check the problem statement or the beginning of this video um, we use a Pauli X if she wants to send a two she needs to apply a Pauli Z again check the problem statement for finding out which operator she needs to apply for a particular information so for sending three she needs to apply a Pauli X followed by uh, Pauli Z finally it's time for Bob to decode the information let's see if he receives it accurately or not so Bob use a C naught followed by a Hadamard and of course the Hadamard will be applied to the first wire and we want to see what is the probability of receiving the right information so we use QML probes and we apply to both wires now to make sure everything is uh, done properly based on the circuit we can use the QML.draw to draw our circuit and we can print it for a certain input let's say we want to send two and let's say the alpha value for non-maximal entangled state is pi over four now let's see the circuit well it looks good we have the rotation we have the C naught Alice is using poly Z for encoding because we are sending two and Bob is using a C naught and Hadamard perfect now finally we are asked to find out the probability of sending the right information so we use uh, we define a function to gives us the probability of sending a, the particular bit that we are transmitting so this function receives a bit that we are sending an alpha value and it gives us the probability of sending that particular bit so let's let's test it let's test it for sending three using a alpha value of pi over three and let's see what is our success rate 93 percent so there is 93 percent chance that Bob receives the right information so you can try changing the alpha value and you will probably see that in the best case scenario the information will be transmitted very accurately and in the worst case scenario we are technically only sending one of the bits well I hope you learned something from this coding challenge video and if you liked it check out our other videos on the YouTube channel and see you in the next one